What's happening everyone? Excuse the mess, excuse the hair, but I feel like I just have to get back into this and I don't care about how I look. Let's get into the video. This week, I decided to make a sweet spider layer for the Arachnorock. Let's start this. Let me get the boring parts out of the way. Yes, I'm using cardboard and foam cones. This is as cheap as I can possibly start this. I really need to get rid of this material. Matter of fact, I think I really need to get rid of a lot of material I've collected over the years. Maybe I'll make a series out of it. From craft to craft. How does that sound? In this step, all you need to do is poke some holes in these cones big enough to be able to paint inside of them, but not too big to ruin the structure strength. Uh, we will be adding strength to it later. You'll see where I'm going with this. This is where I start to use sculpt -a mold I feel like this is a must-have material for anyone in the hobby. At first it's a bit hard to apply to the foam because the foam is so smooth but eventually I get a good coverage on these. I also don't worry and don't rush so if I need it to dry a little bit before I add another layer, I do so. You're more than welcome to make these rocks look as rough as possible but I'm going for like an underground cave look and I feel like what I ended up with is the right texture for me. I gave these balls a good squeezing before I glue them to make sure they don't look perfectly spherical at the end. And yes, I realized there was no other way to say that sentence without getting a few comments in the comments section below. I'm fully prepared for the backlash. There's actually a sweet spot where you can actually work details into this material. It's right before it completely dries. Like I said before, I'm not going for a very rocky look. I'm going for a mild rocky look. I just dab it with a moist paper towel to get rid of some of that spiky texture you tend to get with sculpt -a mold This leaves behind a perfect mild rocky look that I was talking about. Did I say I was trying to get rid of this stuff? Of course I am. So I'm gonna make a lot of these, and I would say you should do that too. It's always nice to have repeated textures and repeated details when you're having a board. I like to look at these boards as like a painting, and you don't want something to just show up on one side of the painting and never again on the rest. It just doesn't look right. When working on sculpt -a mold I always suggest a healthy coverage of Mod Podge mix, especially when you're gonna add washes later on. I paint this whole thing in gray tones. Okay, I wasn't about to comment on this, but I must. Have you guys ever found a color you like so much, you end up going back into past projects and painting with that color too? That's what happened when I found this brown. I felt like I finally made the perfect shade of, I don't know if it's burnt sepia or raw amber or some of the, I don't remember. I should have probably looked at it before I started talking. I changed every single base for any cave tile I had ever done and even went back on like past projects that were underground that I was just like it needs to have this brown on them all right sorry let's, let's try to stay on track get back to the video peace well I guess in this instance it's pretty obvious what I want to highlight los huevos this next part is excellent for when you're trying to learn how to wet blend. By the end of this project, you're gonna master the technique.
This is also a great way to study the way light hits objects. While at the same time, I want to make these things look like they're glowing. It's not my craft if it's not colorful. And just to finish these off, to make them look glossy, I added a little bit of that glossy Mod Podge mix. Talking about colorful, I got to paint inside the rocks with a dark purple and some magenta highlights thrown in there. I topped it off with the glossy Mod Podge mix again to make it look like it was glistening. Now we get to the part of the video everybody was waiting for. And I know you guys were waiting for this. This is where we make the spider webs, and we make them out of pretty obvious spider web Halloween decoration stuff. I know this isn't crazy, it's not new, but I feel like I do have a few pointers that might help some people out making something look a lot cooler. I will say though, it does take a little bit of playing around to get these right. You really have to sculpt the web and manipulate it as much as possible while you add the Mod Podge mix. Think about it like you're almost painting the spider web itself. If you need this to dry before working on some of the other pieces, go ahead and let it dry. Patience here is key. I try to make the shapes as interesting as possible. And don't just think of the webs as a two dimensional object. Try to get different angles on the webs. The last thing you want is boring spider webs. Last summer, I did a bit of tax sale hunting and got a whole bunch of cool stuff to craft with. One of the things that I was able to get were these bits. I knew what I would use some of them for the second I set my eyes on them. The best thing is the variety of shapes. It's details like this that make the craft go a long way and look great. And like always, the more detail on a piece, the better. This is also great if you really want to get into describing the environment during a session. You can mention the stench of rotting bodies in the air, the collection of weapons left behind by warriors brave enough to set foot in this cave but not strong enough to live with their lives, the pulsing green eggs on the rocks making it sound like the cave has a heartbeat, and so on and whatnot. I'm sure you guys are better than me at verbal descriptions. I'll stick to the visual stuff, but let me know in the comments section below how you describe this encounter with this terrain. Don't be shy, I might end up using it in one of my sessions. Now I know we can get really focused on what we're doing, so don't forget to take a little break every once in a while. What's a spider lair without some of these dangly corpses? These are made out of clay. The type is not really important, 
The only thing important about this is that you make sure that you paint the clay an off-white color. Beige usually works best. You want there to be a contrast between the center of the corpse thing, whatever, and the final webs around the corpse. It almost acts as a highlight. To add more dimension, I add these corpses in between the webs. This is why it's best to make these webs in all types of shapes. This assures you that your project will at least look extremely interesting to look at. Give the viewers an excuse to get off the table and really look at what you made. People feel awesome when they find little details in pieces that they felt was meant to be hidden. And lastly, just in case you wanted a bigger headache, I think I figured out the most frustrating way to make spider web trackers. This was probably the craziest thing I did during this whole project. First, you need a smooth metal surface where your hot glue won't permanently stick. Then you need to make more spider webs. Using the same technique as before, just this time you do want to make them flat. And then you want to transfer them over to a base. This is not as easy and not even sure if anybody but me will ever do this or use it. So, eh, I decided to include it in the video anyways. Enjoy! Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end of the video. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed everything. Uh, this was a really fun project to work on. Sorry if the audio was a little bit off. I'm filming in a new place. It's not ready for filming, but I feel like I had to put something out. It's getting to that point where I'm aching to have my videos up and uh, my space just isn't ready. But I was like, ah, forget it. I'll do it anyways. Like always, thank the patrons, they are the best. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So, shout outs to everybody there. And, uh, I guess I'll see you on the next one. Peace.